I'm Dr. Simons. I'm going to review a sinus CT scan that was done in our office and explain the findings in the anatomy that we see on CT scanning. As you look at this uh, x-ray picture, the CT scan actually takes a series of x-rays in order as if your head was a loaf of bread and we were going to slice it starting in the front to back. So we are near the front of the face here and since the patient is looking out at us, the right side is going to be on this side and the left side will be on this side. The eye sockets will show up in this area. This would be the forehead. This is inside the nose and you can see a few of the upper front teeth. Uh, on the x-ray where we see dense white is usually bone where we see black spaces means that that's where air is and when we see lighter gray colors usually that indicates a soft tissue or cartilage. Inside the nose there's a partition in the middle of the nose that's called the nasal septum and when it's normal it is a midline structure dividing the inside of the nose into equal right and left cavities. The first set of sinuses that we pick up are in the forehead. These are called frontal sinuses. There's usually a thin bone that separates the right from the left. Oftentimes the frontal sinuses can be very asymmetric and that is not an abnormality but it's very common for them to be different size and shapes. I'm going to begin to scroll and what is happening is the x-ray machine has made multiple slices and we are picking up uh, a slice that is a little bit behind the ones that we started with. The frontal sinuses are filled with a very dark black space indicating that they're full of air and that's normal. If there is thickening or swelling of mucous membranes, a gray color will surround the perimeter of the sinus. Uh, the, the bone of uh, the skull shows up in this white area. Uh, we can begin to see the right eye and the left eye. On the sides of the nose internally are soft tissue structures called turbinates. The turbinates are a vascular spongy tissue that is a normal part of our anatomy that tend to help warm and filter and humidify air. Sometimes they can swell and become obstructive to the airway, but they are very important to our physiology. We're moving further back, and so far we haven't found any significant abnormalities. The frontal sinuses will have a communicating drainage duct that comes from the bottom of the sinus and will enter into the nose that we will be picking up later. The brain sits just above these sinuses and around. The maxillary sinuses are beginning to show up here. Immediately we see that in this right maxillary sinus there is a halo around the perimeter of a very uh, light gray color. That indicates swelling of the mucous membrane. The frontal sinuses, their drainage system runs into ethmoid sinuses which are a series of small sinus cells like a honeycomb that are lodged in between the orbital cavities and the inside of the nose. They too should have black centers uh, and on a CT scan we're able to see and define each ethmoid sinus which cannot be seen distinctly on a routine x-ray. Here we see the frontal sinus is clearly draining into the ethmoids as it normally should. The next thing we're going to be looking for uh, with the maxillary sinus showing membrane thickening which is a sign of some kind of an inflammation either from allergy and or infection. We want to know if the drainage duct to the maxillary sinus is working. You can see that at this point in time, the, uh, the uh, turbinate on the right side is much larger than the one on the left. This can be a natural occurrence. Our nose tends to switch sides, shunting blood flow from one side to the other, which is called a nasal cycle, and that is normal. You probably notice that when you sleep on one side, the side that's down becomes more swollen or congested 
the side that out is up it opens up and that will reverse if you turn to the other side and that's from these turbinates uh, engorging with blood from gravity effect. The nasal septum has a slight bend here but it's mostly in a midline position. As we're scrolling back we're seeing that the ethmoid sinuses remain clear and open. There is persistent swelling of the membrane inside the right maxillary sinus in the cheek and pretty soon we're going to find the drainage duct. Looking at the left maxillary sinus we see everything is normal, it's clear, it's black. This is the tiny drainage duct that comes uphill, enters near the ethmoid and then drains into the nose. Inside the maxillary and all sinuses mucus is produced and cilia or microscopic hair-like structures will sweep the mucus up through the natural drainage duct and into the nose. That drainage system is how we keep our sinus healthy in a natural way and it's very important that the mucus be able to drain out. This cleans the inside of the sinus and washes away any contaminants or infected materials. On the right side the drainage duct has swelling as does the inside of the sinus and as a result it is blocked right in here. This is an ideal type of sinus disease that can be remedied with a balloon sinuplasty where a guide wire with a light on the end of it is passed into the duct and then into the sinus. The light will be seen on the tip of that guide wire externally. Once the uh, light is visualized externally we have confirmation of the proper location of the guide wire and a, a balloon dilating device passes over the, the guide wire into this drainage duct and is inflated to open that. So this patient uh, was an ideal uh, candidate to have that balloon procedure. There are uh, uh, turbinate tissues that are located along the bottom of the nose then there are, these are called uh, inferior turbinates and then there are middle turbinates which are higher and there is a space between the middle turbinate and the side of the nose and the inferior turbinate and that's called the middle meatus. Most of our sinuses drain into the middle meatus and then back in down into the nasal cavity. This patient has air cells or sinus cells that are located inside the middle turbinates. That is a variation of anatomy that doesn't happen too often but it's called a concha bullosa. The effect of that is that it can expand the diameter or the width of the turbinate and produce pressure and sometimes obstruction to how the sinuses can drain and that can be surgically corrected if there's an indication to do so. As we scroll back further we continue to see the blockage in the drainage duct on the right maxillary and normal anatomy on the left. This represents a very small bony spur from the nasal septum but it is not obstructing the airway. Some of these can get very large and block the airflow so that breathing issues become a problem. As we are scrolling further back, we are seeing uh, more of the ethmoid system as it uh, extends into the back of the na nasal uh, and sinus region. Fortunately for this patient, all these individual uh, sinuses are clear and patent. They look normal. We're going to keep on going until we run into the very last set of two sinuses called the sphenoid sinuses and they are below the base of the skull. These still are ethmoid cells called posterior ethmoid cells because they're in the back and now we are entering where the sphenoid sinuses are located. These are the only sinuses that do not drain in that middle meatus. They drain separately uh, and sometimes can have isolated sinus disease without any um, uh, associated sinus disease in the other sinuses. But they are normal. They have clear black spaces. 
The rest of this anatomy all up in here is all brain. So one can see the close approximation of the sinuses and the eye cavities to our sinuses, uh, making it uh, very important that uh, proper visualization with either a scope and or a balloon device is very helpful for safety purposes. This patient uh, has no other sinus problems other than that right maxillary sinus and um, perhaps a little enlargement of turbinates for congestion. That concludes the evaluation of the sinuses in this patient.